What's good, gamers? Welcome back to another episode of Hate Line ABD. Uh, we got a intense, heavy barracks episode for you. So for all of my barracks fans, uh, enjoy. The barracks is like a an infected, flea infested dog at this point. You know, I think everybody knows it would be best to just take it round the back like old Yeller and blow its brains out i'm gonna be covering three barracks videos here that they've they've uploaded the first is uh eric costin and friends show you how phones affect the environment that's how you know skateboarding's gone corporate when they start um using the correct versions of affect slash effect what's up party people eric costin here carbon emissions are bad for us because when it gets trapped in the atmosphere it causes climate change whoa which is bad for us. Totally. Hey, that's the sound a rail makes, not a table. What the heck, man? Brand new foam pumps out 190 pounds of carbon emissions in its lifetime. Compare that to a refurbished smartphone, which only produces 15 pounds. Oh. Yes, I am an athlete and a mathlete. There's a term swirling nowadays. Okay, boomer, it's going viral. Future P. We all need water to exist, but you know what else needs it? Smartphones. Chill. My bad. What? What is the sound effect that they added? They added a popping sound and she just does a manual in front of him? Chill. My bad. It takes 21,000. Okay, listen. Costin, you did not get anywhere near the top of this ramp. 741 gallons of water to make a single smartphone. But a refurbished smartphone? It Wait, but then sh she did a front disaster on the very top of it, but the thing only goes up to here. I'm so fucking confused by this. This doesn't make any sense. Phone. 619 pounds of materials are dug up just to find some precious metals. Even when the battery and the screen are replaced, only 50.3 pounds of materials are dug up for a re- Now we're doing sideways graphs to because Costin felt like doing a manual? E-waste. No one's really talking about it, but I don't know why. Mm. E-waste. I think I know why Costin's talking about it. Cause he's getting paid. Oh, does Costin actually give a shit about the environment? It's any piece of tech that is thrown away before its time is up. And it's beating out fast fashion. It's the fastest growing solid waste stream in the world. We produce 50. You know whose time is up, Costin? You, if you keep doing these stupid fucking barracks ads. Of course, it would be better if you didn't buy one at all. But then you would have to send news through the actual mail. Usually, I like I don't give a fuck, you know. Costin's doing another ad. Costin's an ad machine. The problem that I have with doing these kinds of ads where you talk about ethics and, and saving the planet and shit is if you're going to be a spokesperson and you're going to do an advertisement like this, it should also be reflected in your own behavior. Every single clip you see of him, he's skating a different skateboard and a different pair of shoes. What's in this one? That's a child. Here's a different pair of dunks. Here's a different pair of dunks that he's skating. Here's him selling whatever the fuck these stupid things are. Here's him skating a different pair of dunks. Here's him skating a, a new pair of his shots and a new board. So it's like skateboarding is it's just really wasteful in general. Do you have any idea what it fucking takes to make a pair of shoes? I mean, and he skates for fucking Nike. He literally skates for Evil Corp. Nike ethics rating. Nike contributes to the mass slaughter of kangaroos. According to the campaign, kangaroos are not shoes. More than 2 million kangaroos are shot each year in Australia. It's the largest land-based commercial wildlife slaughter in the world. Oh, shit. You think Costin is using a refurbished phone? What do you think the odds of that are? I'm thinking a uh, fucking zero. Continuing with our little barracks trend, we got Burberry Airy hopping fences presented by Bose. And we also have Sunny Soljic. I'm gonna be nicer to Sunny than I am to Burberry because I despise Burberry Airy and he is an adult. Meanwhile, Sunny Soljic is just a wistful, naive little 16 year old, so. 
Ew, man. Remember P-Rod was roasting Carlos Ribeiro for his fucked up hands? What do you think P-Rod would say about Burberry Aries malnourished skeleton? They're mangled. Your, your shits are deformed, bro. Barely holding on with one finger to what probably feels like a 500-pound Bose speaker. How about we get a shot of Burberry Aries standing with his arms crossed like a Tony Hawk's Underground 2 NPC, then we slap a VHS filter on it because that's what's cool right now. Keep gates closed, but you know, we don't give a fuck around here. Also, why the fuck would you pick Burberry Airy for your slogan of hopping fences? He doesn't hop any fences. He doesn't skate any street. He only skates skate parks. Okay. My father was a drinker. <laughs> and one night, he goes off crazier than usual. My dad was obsessed with soccer, bro. No way, bro. Once I met skateboarding, my life changed, bro. No way, bro. The light. When I was in high school, bro, I graduated. Bro? And I, and I just kept beating myself up. Like, dude, skateboarding didn't provide me anything. I wasted my life years down the line. I'm literally doing what I want to do. He's like doing this ad for Bose where it's supposed to be about passion and, and hopping fences and keeping it raw, keeping it real. Well, skateboarding's not making me any money, so I wasted my fucking life. He was only stoked on skateboarding again after it started making him money. It just happened so quickly, bro. It was a literal blink of an eye. Bro. I walk in, bro. John Mayer. Bro. Pharrell. Bro. Gaga. Bro. Drake and I nodded each other. We went like this and then I would just find the song and escape to it. Just your traditional Burberry Airy session where he has to hop the fence to get into the air-conditioned private skateboarding facility. There's a speaker company called Bose, so obviously they want to partner with a skateboarder, Burberry Airy, who's a Bozo. <laughs> Um, let's watch Sonny's now, which I'm gonna be much nicer to Sonny. He's just a lad. He's just trying to find himself. My idea of hopping fences is hopping over any obstacle. Oof, positive thoughts only. I'm no psychologist, but I think once people start like writing down positive affirmations and then and then hanging them up on the wall, it's actually kind of a red flag where I would I would check in on somebody like, are you are you okay? It's like, yeah, man, just uh, telling myself to have only positive thoughts okay well yeah i recently just put these post-its up god there's so many different things he's trying to he's trying to achieve here award for best actor from oscars become olympic gold medalist 2024 Bruh. perform at coachella 2023 jesus christ some of them are actual goals i really want to perform at coachella hey, no way, go to the olympics for skating no way, and uh here's what i'm gonna say look what is this fucking whiteboard this is like stuff that depressed wine moms do. Um, <laughs> a squared equals association. A squared equals action. Here's what I'm gonna. I would say to a younger person like Sonny Soljic, um, and maybe I'm thinking too small. You know, Sonny Soljic is a lot more famous than I am. Your goals, your ambitions are win best actor for a film go to the 2024 Olympics and perform at 2023 Coachella. You've selected like the highest possible goals in three respective fields. You may be better off, Sonny, just choosing one and getting really good at that. I think that if you put your eggs in too many baskets, you're only shooting yourself in the foot. Psycho person behavior to be like, yeah, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get an Oscar, I'm gonna perform at Coachella, and I'm gonna go to the Olympics. You think like the professional rowers, they're training their ass off for like their entire lives just to get to the Olympics, and they're like, yeah, I mean, this Olympics thing is a big deal in my life, but I'm also trying to uh, win an Oscar and perform at Coachella. Rowing has been a lot around a lot longer than skateboarding, but even for skateboarding, there's fetuses in Japan right now that are big flip front boarding handrails, and you think that you're gonna be able to make it to the Olympics while you're ju juggling seven other activities? A Marvel movie or something? And a Marvel movie? Jesus. Well, you're not gonna win an Oscar if you're in a Marvel movie. Those things fucking suck. <laughs> And listen, Sonny's a Sonny seems like a nice a nice kid. Um, I hope he finds his path. But you know who else can kickflip front crook? 
every single fucking person that will be skating at the Olympics, and they can all probably do it switch. So let's put in a little more time onto skateboard and a little less time into the music. My life's a movie to film I'm on a boulevard, Hollywood, Cinemark. What? Music is so objective, and you can't really... Wrong one. It's subjective. I get it. It's that's not the easiest thing. Tall buildings and the homeless girls here order their coffees foamless. Hmm. What do you think he means? Girls here order their coffees foamless. They're not getting cappuccinos. I feel like that's that's pretty normal. The majority of a, a coffee menu does not include foam. It's like you know the minority of of drinks on the menu include foam. Anyway, middle of December, but there's only a breeze, so homies in West Hollywood still wearing capris. Capris? Right! Who are you hanging out with? Mikey Alfred wearing capris? Gotta be out all day, cause tomorrow is storming. So he says the weather is bad tomorrow, but then also says in the middle of December, there's only a breeze. So I'm getting conflicting takes here about the, the weather in Los Angeles. Man, speaking of people, that I won't fucking leave alone. Elijah has this sweet new Vans shoe that's out, which I guess was Vans way of apologizing for discontinuing his pro model. So they gave him uh, this cute shoe where you get these little uh, Velcro things that you get to stick on the side. These flames and these dice are, are edgy, like for a seven year old. These shoes would pair well with a, a t-shirt that said, I paused my game to be here. Sorry, Elijah, please don't beat me up. Ever take advice from a professional retired skateboarder? My man does have a point here. Uh, Mikey Taylor crashed his car. Don't worry, it's fine, he's fine, it's all good so we can make fun of it brutal story about how i totaled my tesla mikey taylor's funny because he's he's one of those finance bros where once you take that finance bro path it's like joining a cult fully changes who you are i think to the core where you stop referring to things like as your car and instead it becomes your tesla because that's like a status symbol and like even the people around you mikey stops referring to them uh by their their name uh, and starts referring to them by like their job title i was just documentary recently uh, about heaven's gate which is this cult where they you know they ended up killing themselves um in in search of salvation because they thought it was the rapture because a comet flew by being a finance bro is like very similar to being in a cult except they think that they're going to reach salvation by becoming materialistic wealth hoarding psychopaths and i have to tell you this part so that the end makes sense a week before I crashed, I saw this video on TikTok about somebody who got trapped in a Tesla. The power went out, so they couldn't open the doors. It caught on fire, and they didn't know where the emergency handle was, and then they ended up dying. This will make sense, trust me. So I'm driving... <laughs> okay, Mikey, I'll trust you. So I'm driving to Beverly Hills for this dinner. Driving to Beverly Hills for this dinner. In his self-driving car, obviously. Tesla, by the way. And I'm always on autopilot, so the car's doing its thing. I'm going down the 405, which is a freeway in LA. It's in LA the 405, where Beverly Hills is. And also, don't forget, this video was recorded in Los Angeles, California. And I need to get off the exit. Mm -hmm. So I get out of autopilot, I move over, and I'm just driving. Not on my phone, not doing anything illegal, looking forward to the normal. I wasn't even questioning that you were doing anything illegal, Mikey, before you made it very clear to be like, wasn't doing anything illegal, by the way. So Tesla has the big kind of iPad screen, right? Yeah. So I look at the screen to see where I'm going, look for the directions. I said, look down for a second. All of a sudden I look up, person in front of me slamming on the brakes. I hit the brakes hard. And if you're somebody who already follows me, I know, I couldn't find my normal headphones. If you're new, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> That's the weirdest time to toss that in. Sorry, that probably makes no sense. Back to the story. <laughs> I can't stop in time. Smash the car in front of me. Every airbag goes off. Airbag in front of me, on the sides, behind me. It started smelling like a fire. I started panicking. Now I'm having flashbacks of the TikTok video I saw the week before, thinking I'm gonna get trapped in this thing and die. <laughs> now my partner, the CEO of our company, is right next to me. I look at him like, dog, open the door. We have to get out of here now. Uh, his partner and also CEO of the company. Do you think he said that in the moment? Partner and CEO of the company. We have to get out of here now. Um, this is what I'm talking about. How like being a finance guy like rewires your fucking brain. In a situation that is a car accident. Partner and CEO of my company who was also in the car that we thought was on fire. Fucking insane. It makes a lot of sense that uh, he's wearing a shirt that says commune on it. Is the cult stuff really starting to fall together now? Is it falling into place? My Tesla's gone. 
I ended no. up being in actually a good position because oh. the used car market is like through the roof right now. And of course I had insurance on the car. So that's a crazy story though. Let me know if you want to hear that one. I'll make another video. Thought I was going to die in a car accident. However, used car market right now though is pretty sweet. So uh, definitely going to get a pretty dope reimbursement on that Tesla. Glad you're okay, Mikey. Um, good luck with your cult. So this happened. Uh, <laughs> Gary V went on the Nine Club. The Nine Club's been fucking up a lot lately. Uh, they invited that guy on uh, who said that pretty bad stuff. I'm so sorry. I just want to send out prayers to the... They invited Gary V, who is like this. If you think I'm annoying, listening to Gary V talk is so much fucking worse. He is like the guy that, that Mikey Taylor uh, looks up to. And I get why the Nine Club wants to do this. I think they're sort of stepping out of their usual skateboarding zone just a little bit by inviting like a finance bro on. Um, but he is a finance bro that's like, well, man, I used to skate, so I kind of get it. But while Gary Vee talks about how he would start a skateboarding company, he basically describes Karayuma's business model. If you were to start a skateboard company tomorrow, Right. How would you go about? I would completely and utterly pound creative and sponsor influencers. I would bombard TikTok with almost all of my energy. Mm. Well, listen, I'm, I, I came here to bring some value, so I'm going right up there. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's go. That's what I say when I when I sit down with a group of people. I go, I came here to bring some value. This is the elephant in the room for everyone who's listening. Everybody who's listening who's either starting a hoodie brand, is a 9, 12, 15 year old, a 40 year old that's trying to get brand deals and do stuff. <laughs> All of you listening right now in any shape or form, whether you're the human or you're starting a brand selling something. What is he fucking talking about? Whether you're a human or you're starting a brand. What do you think Gary V's pill stack looks like in the morning? Like, do you think that he's just like crushing 16 different new tropics right as he wakes up? Or do you think that he just does a bunch of coke before he gets on camera? Go, uh, could be both, I don't fucking know. It's constantly in your head because this space is so good. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you've seen these little goosebumps I'm getting right now. <laughs> Here's the fucking blow, baby. Where's the fucking blow at, dude? All right, this dude is definitely on some shit. Authenticity and truth and awesomeness of true community that this genre has. And I would, I would go all the Ew. way from BMX surf and skateboarding, I'm com capturing it all. Sure. I think it's funny that like Gary Vee is is talking about how awesome and you know and and true and and truthful the skateboarding community is, and meanwhile they fucking hate him. Every brand that was a street brand with you guys that did well because they were young and you were young, when they're at year ten and they sold their company to Coca Cola or Pepsi for the fourteen year old, now that you're twenty four, for the fourteen year old, that's the sellout brand, Ooh. even though you got your rapist homo thug black balls over there. What the hell are you talking about? What? It's just the way the game's played. Absolutely. So what I would say is step one, <laughs> and this is very- Chris Roberts in the background acting like any of that made fucking sense going, absolutely, man. I am a good businessman. I have done well. I am purebred entrepreneur, but the reason I am is I've never compromised ever mm. on my soul or my essence for the short-term dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro, totally. I'm sure there is a fucking gold mine of Gary V bullshit that I could comb through on this Nine Club episode. Gary V, I think, is an insane finance bro, and I think they are one of the worst genres of human being uh, that you could ever have the misfortune of transforming into. I've never sacrificed like my essence or my soul or anything. That's why I'm a good businessman. I actually think the opposite of, is true of somebody like Gary V, where he's in like the NFT community. I think that what Gary V does and what a lot of other finance guys like Gary V do when they do this kind of shit is, is pretty fucked up. Welcome to vfriends.com. Vfriends is an ambitious NFT project around characters that have traits that I believe in so, so much. They also happen to be a token to a conference that I'm gonna put on every single year around entrepreneurship, marketing, ideas, creativity, competition. So I see this, like these things as being like half pyramid schemes and half just preying on lonely people. With the environment that we live in right now, everybody's on online, everybody's on their phone, everybody's on social media. Simultaneously, a lot of people I think feel really isolated and I think people desire community. They wanna feel like they are part of something. This 
Gary V, V Friends NFT is, yeah, what you're buying is a digital piece of shit JPEG drawn by either Gary V or Mikey Alfred. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. What you're buying visually is a piece of garbage. What he's offering you is like this community. You come to my conference, you have to spend all this money, and then you will be in on something. Meeting new friends, it's a community. These guys like Gary V, what they do is they turn themselves into the like these finance celebrities where you're like, do what I do, copy me, listen to me as a mentor, and, and then you can become rich. Create an ecosystem around the access tokens that are a huge part of this project. Hangout time, group stuff, bowling, tennis, bubble hockey, video games, dinners, brunches, and then remind me. See, you can, you can come to dinners and brunches if you buy one of the, these stupid fucking Sharpie drawings. Find a hobby or something, go bowling, do anything um, besides buy an NFT. This is just another heaven's gate. This is another cult. What, 555 gift codes? Correct. These are people who are gonna literally put in your address and stuff shows up. Hangout Hawks, five times a year in a Zoom for three years, 15 sessions? That's crazy. How so what he's offering you is hanging out on a Zoom call. <sighs> FaceTime? How many access tokens are there just one-on-one -on -one with me? 108. Just think about that. That's the number one request I get every single day. Literally like he's a prophet. You spend enough money, you get this access token, and guess what? Jesus Christ reincarnated Gary V will FaceTime with, with you. Do you know like what kind of fucking narcissistic sociopath you have to be to to volunteer your own time on a FaceTime and, and view that as currency? He's not a financial genius. He's just some asshole who preys on lonely people. Is snacks. Last thing I'll get into here, um, we're returning to the big boy bandit, um, who just grows bolder and bolder. I think that he uh, deactivated his Instagram and renamed it and shit, um, but he's back. He really doesn't give a motherfuck. And this is his worst defense so far. Selling my HD VX100 camera, DM if interested. Okay. This nerd, Gabe Nelson, a.k.a. the Big Boy Bandit, stole this camera from Almonte. Don't let him forget how lame it actually is to steal anything from a person like the money they sent you for pants, let alone ripping off a small business, especially one in the skateboarding community that hooked you up. So, if you don't understand, this is what Gabe has done now. I think he used to live in Nevada. This shop was hooking him up, and they loaned him the shop camera, this HD VX100, and then he took it out to California. He's now acting like he's going to sell this HDVX 100. So who knows if he's actually going to sell it or if he's just using it as bait to steal more money from people. He's stealing from a skate shop who was hooking him up, who had the good faith to loan this guy a fucking camera so hopefully he would do something with his sorry ass, but instead he just stole it. I, I don't know what's worse, if he actually sells the camera or if he doesn't sell it and just keeps taking people's money. Because either way, somebody's getting fucked over. That's what happens when you sell things that don't belong to you. Gabe Nelson, as it turns out, is actually upset with me. Gabe said, he was so unfair to me. Oh, I'm so fucking sorry, Gabe that I called you out for stealing from skateboarders and I'm going to do so again for stealing from a skate shop that hooked you up in the first place. You know any idea how fucked you have to be to steal from somebody who's hooking you up? Look at the way I've been treated lately, especially by the media. No politician in history has been treated worse or more unfairly. You can't let them get you down. Anyway, this fucking guy, Gabe Nelson, is such a dick. Like, it's unbelievable. Some people just don't stop surprising you. And I like he actually, Gabe was using the fact that he got called out as like some sort of arc, like he was changing his behavior now. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna try to like make it right and pay as many people back as I can. And you fucking aren't. You are never going to do that. People keep DMing me, should I buy from this guy? No, don't fucking buy from Gabe Nelson. Don't buy from him. He's one of the worst people in the skateboarding community. Creativity heals one's need to criticize. Thank you, John Hill Art, Progress Daily. Very cool. I'm a pretty creative guy. I peed in the dirt and I drew a smiley face. And uh, believe it or not, the next day I woke up and I still felt like talking shit 
on your stupid drawings. <laughs> it's a funny world we live in. Speaking of which, you know how I got these scars? No. But I know how you got these. <laughs> when I die and find Kobe Bryant, I'm gonna beat him up. Yeah, when I die and find King Vaughn, I'ma beat him up. When I die and find FBG Duck, I'ma beat him up. When I die and find Tukaville, I'ma beat him up. Oh, I swear to God, all them niggas, them niggas getting beat up. When I go and find Asian Dog, I'ma beat him up. When I find, uh, when I find T Grizzly on God, I'ma beat him up. Gotta get this right here. Uh, no, I'm not I'm about to say what gonna get this. I changed my mind.